said, as quickly. You still curse it. Uh -oh. Just not as quick. Amen. So that is evidence of some internal change. Then we made some internal changes to the extent that we don't go to all the places we used to go. Amen. There's still a few places we'll trip around here and there, but, but we don't go to all the we used to go. That's evidence of an internal change. Uh, some of our tempers are not as bad as they used to be. We used to react without thinking. At least now we're starting to take time to think before we react. Now that we've been convinced that the church is right and that God has to be first in my life, many of us have made an attempt to make some internal changes. Not only that, with the internal change, some of us have made some external changes. In other words, not only have we changed our mind, we've also changed our behavior. We no longer go to the clubs or to the bars or the juke joints anymore. Mm -hmm. well, I guess I should say maybe not as often as I used to. Amen. Mm -hmm. I can make it a big amen on that one. Amen. I, I, you may still, you know, tip around to some places, but you don't go as frequent as you used to go because there has been some external changes. Mm -hmm. There's been some external changes when one becomes a member of the body of Christ and leaves the false doctrine of denominationalism. They change their locations. But sometimes even though we change our location, externally, internally, we may be still the same. Amen. And that's the reason why we have problems. All of us can attest to some time or another in our life when even though we're not going somewhere, our body may be here, but our minds, amen and here, might be on the other side of town. Amen. That you made an external change, but in order to make the kind of change that God wants you to make, it cannot be just internal. And it cannot be just external. If you do that, you'll make the proverb true. We have a proverb or a saying amongst us that indicates that we make some change, but not enough change. That's right, sir. What do we say to you? We said you can take the boy out the country. Yes, sir. Come on, can I get a witness here? But you can't take the country out of the ball. Amen. What are you saying? You can take him out of the country, put him in a nice, gated community, and give him this nice, palatial home. And, and if, you, if he doesn't change his mind into fitting his new environment, He'll dig a hole in the front yard and plant him some catfish. <laughs> Amen. And he'll be sitting out there when you get home from work fishing oh. in a gated community. Oh. Why? Because you can take the boy out the country. But unless you change his mind, you can't take the country out the boy. Come on with it. And so that's what we're dealing with. Many of us have come out of the world but now we need to get the word out of us in order for this real change to take place. And so this is a change in view of eternity. This is not just internal. It's not just external. But this is an eternal change. What are you talking about here? My view of heaven causes me to change both inside and out. Right. When I make my mind up that I want heaven to be my home, mm -hmm. I live here like I'm trying to go up there. Right. Are y'all with me? Right this is a spiritual renewal of the whole man and not just part of the man. And this has been many of our problems. Many of us still wrestle with hang-ups, habits, and heartbreak because we've only made either an internal or an external change. But you got to put those two together 
So you can change in view of eternity. And the only way to change in view of eternity is for you to go through a transformation. Right. Look like an eye test. Yeah. Romans chapter 12. Mm -hmm. And we can at verse number 1. Paul says, I beseech you. Beseech, my friends, is the opposite of commanding. Paul here is entreating. He's encouraging or urging the brothers. And he's doing that by the mercies of God. Because God's tender compassion is so good. Because God is so full of pity when it comes to his children. Because his mercy is new every morning. Because his mercy endured forever. Paul is begging them to present their bodies a living sacrifice. Y'all see that? Because God is so good to you. You ought to want to be good to God. Don't that make sense? He's so good to me. So why won't I be good for him? Present your bodies. Offer yourself up to God. This is the dedication of your body, your mind, and your spirit to God for his service. This means you don't hold back and make excuses of what you got to do. But you're willing to do whatever it is that God needs you to do to fulfill his will and his service. Have we still not recognized the undeniable fact that the great commission is for all of us? When God said, go ye, that included you and me. A amen in here. We have a God-given responsibility to be about our Father's business. There's no such thing as I don't have time to come to Bible class like I would like to. Right. There's no such thing as I got too much to do to come back on Sunday evening. When you present your body as a living sacrifice to God, you are telling God, He is my all. Amen. And God wants all or nothing at all. Many of us have made some excuses. We make excuses because we ain't made the right change. Yeah, yeah, at least now you're coming to church on Sunday morning. And we're glad you do. I'm going to give you a message like this here. To try to get you back on Sunday night. Amen in here. I mean, if you really love the Lord, you ought to want to spend as much time with Him as possible. Is it right? When you really love somebody, you want to be around them 24-7. Amen. Just, just can't get enough of them. Y'all not ever be able to get enough of the worship of God. Amen. Opportunity to bow down before his presence and to give him obeisance and honor and to thank him for carrying you from point A to point B all this week. And you got nerve to talk about my show coming on tonight. Amen. Hello in here. God has been too good for you. Amen. And that's the reason why Paul says, by the mercies of God, because of his mercy, you ought to be to God what he's been to you. He's been good to you. And you ought to want to be good to him. So present your bodies a living sacrifice. How do we do that? How can I present me unto God as a living sacrifice? The whole of your life has to be about bringing glory to God. Y'all hear that? Right. That means every aspect of your life has to be about bringing God glory. Right. Now, the devil is crafty enough to understand that the more problems he throw in your life, uh -huh. the less you focus on giving God the Lord. He knows that. He knows that if he can get you so focused on your problems, you will be forgetful and neglectful 